somewhere <laughs> somewhere in England. <laughs> yes, indeed. Nice to see you. You're not going to ask me another challenge. No, I'm not. I'm teasing you. Wishing you. That's great. Yeah. That's the shot. That's the shot. Oh, that is carried. Come on, pull one up here towards me. I don't like fights, so just fall quickly. Train you for the to me and what is so unique and there's a table here at the front of our key partners is the way the industries come together to try and find a solution for a problem that we've um, detected um, as a result regards to policy. In the process of getting from A to B there's been some unintended and some negative consequences for the environment and I think what we need to learn about is how when we Here's so much, and the Secretary of State's been great in championing the need to produce more food. As we meet those challenges of producing more, we make sure we impact less on the environment and we do it in a smarter way. What I think is important is that we should recognise that the fact that with the right signals, farming is making real progress. And Paul Christensen, the, 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 the party or the celebration you had on Tuesday night this week to mark the first 22 years of agri-environment schemes is absolutely critical. I don't think if anyone looked back to the first scheme in 1987, you'd have believed that two-thirds of the countryside would now be included in conservation agreements. The fact that we now have over 6 million hectares under those agreements, under 58,000 agreements, that is a, a fantastic way forward. I think it goes to acknowledge that when farmers are given the right encouragement and right support, we actually can put more effort into the things that actually come naturally to us. Farmers do take a long-term view of their farming businesses and the environment under which we farm. So putting those right incentives in place, giving us the right facts and information on how to manage those um, delicate environmental environments is absolutely critical for the future. Collectively for the industry, this is an enormous ask. This is a major ask for the industry. It's a big challenge. But on individual farms, and with the individual advice from special advisors, those advisors, David and Andrew, who come onto farms to tell farmers about their everyday decision making, we think a whole load, many small actions can make a big difference. The trigger that brings us here today was in fact the decision to uh, set the set-aside rate to 0% uh, back in the summer a couple of years ago. Now, Sitting in the, the chair that I do, I remember that moment very well because one group of people were shouting in this ear saying, you must regulate tomorrow or disaster will befall all of us. And in the other ear was another group of people saying, don't you do that. It would be a profound mistake. But the thing in the end that persuaded me was when you, Peter, and Henry and others on the group said, look, uh, will you trust us to do the right thing? And in return, we will give this all of our effort, all of our support. And I hope you feel that I, uh, we collectively, have looked you in the eye and said, OK, we'll do that, and we'll do it together. In one sense, it'd be a lot easier for everybody if we'd done it a different way. Because Peter Henry and others could have said, well, look what they've done, you know, I wouldn't have done it this way myself. Well, we tried our best, but... And uh, others could have said, well, regulation is kind of quite and neat and easy because you think you know exactly what the outcome is going to be. And I take your point, Peter, that uh, the consequences are not always what you necessarily intended. And everyone would have been in a comfortable place because it's what we were used to. 
But actually what we've done is a slightly more uncomfortable place. And the other truth is we've ended up not where we expected to be when this process began. But we've ended up, in my view, and I know it's your view and the view of all of the partners, in a better place. In life, if, you can, if we can be encouraged to do the right thing, and we don't always do it, but if we can be encouraged and you can tap into people's expertise and enthusiasm and knowledge and passion and care and concern, particularly for the countryside and wildlife and the way in which our food is produced and our landscape is shaped and our biodiversity is harmed or helped, then you can get a better outcome. The, the industry and all of the partners have taken on a very big responsibility. Because you know, it is a big task. But I am absolutely confident that we are going to succeed because just look around the room here at the number of people who have turned up. Look at the support that there is, and I know there will be, for this campaign. It is not a competition. We need both of these things. We need a thriving natural environment. We need a biodiversity to prosper. We need clean water. We need our soil to be looked after. And we need a lot of agricultural production. And we need a lot of farmers, not just in this country, but across the world. And the great challenge for humankind at the beginning of this century is how we can do the two things together in partnership and not one win out over the other in a false competition, a false choice. And what the Campaign for the Farm Environment does is, I think, chart a new way of trying to bring those two things together. In the end, we have to do it and we have to achieve the objectives that we have set because this is a campaign for a purpose. But I'm absolutely sure it's going to be successful. And I want to thank every one of the partners here today and all of you and lots of people who aren't here today for the part you've played in getting us to this point and for the part you are going to play in the future, I know, in making sure that this very important campaign succeeds. Thank you very much indeed.